you've likely seen one of those animations where they show you that one piece flow is a lot better than batched flow. Well, I'm here to tell you that those animations are nonsense and you know it. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel. We talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And it is just time to rectify those nonsense animations about one piece flow. Now we will get back to that one piece flow is a good system, but I think that these animations, they just, they damage that exact message. Now, I'm gonna try and do sort of an animation on a piece of paper, which will of course not fully work, but that way you will know the type of animation that I mean. And we need to, because you understand, when you see this animation, you know it doesn't feel right, right? So what they show is that you've got these texts in your production, and there is the one production system where you want to have batches of five, and there's the one production system where we will flow it through the whole system, but one piece at a time. So after one tact of the machines, and of course I cannot really you know, delete stuff here, but after one tact of the machine, we'll have the same in both systems. But then the second tact of the machine, this one hops over, this one goes in, but here we're still building that batch up again. The third tact of the system, it hops over, we build up. The fifth tact, uh, fourth tact of the system, and at the fifth tact of the system, we've got a finished product, or maybe here already where we finished products. It's sort of the second product is finished, and here we finally have the first batch ready from the first station. And some of these animations, they will continue. They will even show you that now the process continues and that this is already completely done. So these five have moved up all the way to there by the time we haven't even gotten this stack through the second operation. Now, what they will then go on to say is, look how much faster one piece flow is. It'll greatly increase the throughput and speed of your manufacturing. But you also know that this is not how it works. So what we actually do in our production systems is that we sort of have an in and an out box. And like this, we're gonna work. Um, you know, let me sort of draw that in, in purple and make that animation on paper. But your factory isn't empty now, is it? Do you have an empty factory? I don't often have empty factories sitting around. Every time I visit the factory, the actual situation looks more like this. So what we see is that each of the stations has got a job to do. So there is already a stock in front of the process work in progress. So station two isn't idling about while everything gets done by station one, like those animations suggest. No, the, there is stuff in the factory. So what does our first tact then look like? So what we have is that in the main system, one of these raw materials, let's go over, right? But also at the same time, one of these. So after the first tact, we sort of already finished our first product. The only thing is we are waiting for a whole batch here. So we're definitely not done yet, but you know, let's look at the one piece flow system because they will also be waiting for a batch. So what happens in the one piece flow system? This one is done at the same time the other one is done. So this one transfers to here, to here, that one to here, and the first one is done. So, end result, after one tact, the traditional, very bad, remember, traditional system finished the product, and the one-place flow system finished a product. So what's the second tact? Well, let's do two more tacts for now. So, we did two more tacts. And of course, this has decreased by three in that as well as well. We have three products and three products. Let's continue to tag five, right? So 
So each of these processes now finished a full palette or whatever you want to call it. I will also tell you this one piece flow system at the end of what is happening. So if you have automobiles, right? That is one product, that's a unit. If you are translating this to sort of small product assembly, you're not, probably not gonna ship one product. You're gonna ship a pallet or a box or whatever anyway, right? So at the end of the process, a one piece flow process will also build up. Now this, this is the other thing that may have popped into your mind when you saw those nonsense, I, I will repeat it, animations of one piece flow versus batch flow. This is the situation you sort of have in your mind because you've been in a manufacturing organization and you see this work. And you also know, you feel that in the same time, they're making the same amount of products in the end. So there is not such an enormous difference. And in fact, if you have to do a setup every time that uh, some other product comes along, you, you want to batch a bit at one station anyway. Right? So there, there are some disadvantages to fully leveling the load throughout the day and doing things like that. But as I promised, the one piece flow idea is still good. Right? So what do we see? So how should we also make these animations? See, in here, as I said, I, I can't really you know, erase them from the board or anything like that. Uh, I'll see if I can just strike them through to sort of make it clear. But the, the thing is, these purple ones, they are now gone and these are gone and these are gone and these are gone, right? So what happens is that we move this system, now moves everything along. And to actually get the first product of this original stack of raw material done, that is correct in those animations, right? So they will do this whole red stack, we just did it, this purple stack, that red stack, and only then the purple stack, while our one piece flow system has already done that first purple stack. So at any point, if that one piece flow system said, okay, well, we got enough of the purple stuff, we're gonna introduce some red, uh, they will just push it through the system as well. So it will quite quickly, instead of purple, become the red, and that also pushes through the whole system. Now, as I said, it's maybe the idea of having these, it looks like smaller runs, or, or maybe this is not even small runs, this is more coordination of all the systems, right? So while one of these processes is setting up, the rest cannot really continue to push anything to it. If one of them breaks down, you have no, uh, no, no buffer in between, things like that, right? So and that might scare you a bit, but there is a big advantage. See, quite often we have a quality control at the end or just an operator at this station who can most clearly see defects that were caused here, right? If we use this sort of batch-wise system, it'll take a long, long time before we get that feedback because there is so much time in all of these waiting uh, for production is this uh, work in progress, WIP, that is the inventory, the stock, the buffer between all of those processes takes up a lot of time, right? Because we're waiting for whole batches to be finished before starting a new one. That reduces the flow. So maybe not the throughput of our system. It will not reduce the OEE, it will not reduce the, the total amount produced in a month, a year, whatever, right? It just reduces uh, greatly the flow. So that means it will take a lot longer for when we raise an order, when we say, let's, let's do one of those red ones, until we got one of those red ones finished. What this will mean in practice is if the red customer is really, really important, your consumer service or your planning or your sales or one of those departments they will probably start expediting things through the factory. They'll say, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. Um, this batch goes first, stop with the production plan, we're gonna move it through. That creates a lot of chaos because if you have days of waiting, some factories have weeks, but days of waiting in your process because you wanna finish all of those batches before you move it on to the next process, that means that 
you are very, very slow to react. Rush orders will mess up your production. Well, in one piece flow, a rush order, well, it still takes the process time, but the process time isn't that much, right? So like this, you have a lot more flexibility. You have the speed of feeding back problems that were detected here to the start of the process. And you may think, well, just put a quality control here. Some product problems are simply way easier to spot at the end of a line because you are assembling it here or because you are unpacking or folding or whatever, right? Gluing your product together. So things that at the start of the process, just because of how the process is built up, they don't really stick out. Right? Uh, a wrong sort of connector or a wrong bend in a product that is basically still flat or is just sort of a processy thing here, doesn't really stick out. And then when you get to the assembly part where it has to connect, insert, and you see, oh, wait, but the form is wrong or it doesn't fold or hinge, that is where you see it. That's where you easily see it. So what takes a lot of good quality control in the beginning can be easily done for many products at the end of the line. Things like that, they, they really happen. Now the other big thing, so I was talking about a lot of time waiting, a lot of time in work in progress. That is also a lot of capital in work in progress. Right? The stock level in this here factory so depends a little bit on if the entry and exit, right there, the goods in, the goods out, if they work in those full pallets or also sort of the one piece. Let's go for the ideal situation then. One here and then two, three, four, five units in the whole process. Or if we sort of work in batches, then on average, this will be you know, five together. So we've got nine, eight or nine units in the whole system. This system here has five units, 10, 15, 20 units. So five to maybe eight, 20. That is you know, three to four times higher. It also costs you three to four times more of that inventory. Now, if your process is pretty quick compared to the whole logistic chain around it, maybe it's not a big problem for you, right? So if you have got 200 units waiting in stock anyway, then I think we should also have a chat about your stock keeping and one piece flow might actually help you a lot by uh, combining it with, with leveling of the production, but different topic, different topic, then this might be relatively minor. But you, you can see, right, the difference in stock levels, that is also cost. It is also space on the factory floor that you have to reserve for that stock. Now, if this product is about as big as a pallet, and here you can stack a pallet, okay. But what you will more often see is that uh, this, for instance, in sort of large size production will be not a pallet with five products on it, but five pallets with product. And here we move one pallet every time. So in practice, we will reduce our needed space around the machine by the same as we reduce that batch size, right? Five in this case, because we've got four sort of useless pallets sitting around every machine here. And we need the room before and behind the machine. So we, we need to have a double system because we are still working on one batch while another batch is being loaded in there. So in practice, five is sort of the minimum extra space you need. It's more like eight times more space or something like that and a good organization of that space. Now, if one of them does go wrong, uh, so this process stops and these sort of need to finish their batches, and also want to start the next one because otherwise you're still not buffering, it'll just expand. That is the good thing of One Piece Flow. So the system is good. Use it where you can. It'll have a lot less work in progress inventory. That means fast reaction time for any feedback in your production. It means if you have to expedite something or need to change a bit, it's relatively easy and you just put it in as a normal order not an expedited stop the rest because it's fast enough the amount of stuff everywhere around your machines 
or if you don't put it around the machines, but you move it into the warehouse, all of the movements to the warehouse and back, and the money tied up in all of that stock, they are serious drains on your business. So one piece flow is good. It's just that those, those animations that, that show empty stations to start with, please, you know, colleagues of mine, people who, and I, I really like that you make stuff to explain continuous improvement and lean and flow, but stop making those animations and videos and explanations where two thirds of the factory is doing absolutely nothing while their competitor is always working. That's not realistic. And we also, as continuous improvement professionals, we all need to stop showing that animation, that explanation to production people. Because production people know that it is always full, right? We've got enough problems convincing production people of the, uh, the, the real potential behind One Piece Flow without setting ourselves up to fail in the explanation itself. So take that to mind. And to, to all of you production people watching this video, One Piece Flow still is a good system. So let's discuss how we can use it in your factory. For now, I wish you the best of luck in implementing One Piece Flow in your organization. And I wanted to sort of ask you a question. So in the last couple of videos, I have now been using a new microphone. You see no clip on, it's up there, outside of the camera screen, I hope. Um, I hope it helps with the quality of the sound. Let me know a bit. I'm, I am still testing what are the correct settings. This microphone is you know, a bit more difficult to set up properly and has a lot more variables, like how far it is from me. And as you know from production, the more variables you have that you need to check every time, the less consistent the process will be. I'm still in that sort of setup phase. But let me know. Do you notice a quality improvement of the sound in the last couple of videos? I've been using it for five videos, I think now, four or five videos. So just let me know. I like that feedback as well. And to you on your continuous improvement journey, of course, don't forget to enjoy it. And I'll see you in the next video.